We've looked at how people can do things well. Now we will look at how things go wrong. The first type of problem is when we have a good plan of action, but we make a mess of it. We call this a slip. Slips are the result of skilled automatic processing without paying sufficient attention. Like taking an exit too early on a highway. You may be distracted or not concentrating too hard on the road. Suddenly you see an exit you expected and take it. But it was the next one you wanted. Another way to make an error is to forget something. We call these lapses. This is when you discover you have gone past your exit or left the house and closed the door when the keys are still inside. Both slips and lapses are failures of automatic processing when a good plan goes wrong. You didn't mean to take the wrong exit or lock yourself out of the house. You don't always pay the attention you should. Lapses happen when our memory gets overloaded and flushes out what we should have remembered. Good plan, lousy execution. We're also good at solving problems. When this goes wrong, we call it a mistake. Mistakes happen when we fail to understand the world and come up with a lousy plan, usually one we then carry out perfectly. You're driving along a familiar road and suddenly you're faced with a diversion. You may have to decide whether to go left or right. Get it wrong and you will find yourself in all sorts of trouble as you become totally lost. You thought you knew how to get to your destination by another route. You were wrong and spent ages getting back on track. Mistakes are caused by failures to solve problems. There is nothing to beat people for solving new problems when they have the time. When they are under time stress or simply don't know all the facts, people can still come to some conclusion and if that is wrong, we call it a mistake. Lousy plan. Execution is not the problem. All these errors are unintentional. We didn't mean to do what we did in the case of slips and lapses. We didn't intend to make a mess of solving a problem in the case of a mistake. But there is one other sort that is quite different from the rest. We call this a violation. When someone does what they know they shouldn't. Let's first look at violations in some more detail. Why do we worry about violations? The answer is that there is an equation. Violation plus error equals disaster. This means that it takes two components to have a disaster. Someone has to be bending the rules and someone else makes an error. An experienced electrician decides to work on high voltage equipment without full isolation just telling people not to switch power on. He's always been successful until the day someone, in error, switches power on thinking he's switching it off because of a badly designed switch. Bang! Just like different types of errors, we also distinguish different types of violation. Unintended violations, where people either are not aware there is a rule or procedure, or, because it is so complicated, they don't really understand it. Routine violations. Everyone does it like that. Situational violations. Sometimes it just can't be done the right way. Optimizing violations. I know of a better way of doing things. And exceptional violations. There are no procedures except for general guidelines that may be hard to follow. Just try lying down in front of a grizzly bear and stay very, very still. Now, who violates? In a study in the North Sea, we found that it is possible to discriminate two sorts of people, called sheep and wolves. In addition, we found whether they had bent the rules in the previous six months. This we call their clothing. If they hadn't bent the rules, they were in sheep's clothing, while those who admitted to violating recently were wearing wolves' clothing. 
Sheep are the guardians of high standards. Wolves are opportunistic go-getters. Sheep in sheep's clothing are what we need to operate really dangerous equipment, like nuclear power plants. Wolves in wolves' clothing are well known and can be identified. What we found offshore was that the majority of people, almost two-thirds, workforce, supervisors and especially managers, were all wolves. But most people wore sheep's clothing, so the biggest single group offshore were wolves in sheep's clothing. Surprises waiting to appear like bolts from the blue. I know I have it somewhere. Safe. So safe I can't find it.